Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to not really my shop. This is the uh, Hamilton, Ontario Wood Show. It's held at the Canadian National Warplane Museum. It's really interesting for that half where all the airplanes are. Yeah, but I want to show you something I bought. I've been looking for this for a long time. This is the first time I came to a wood show and there was actually an antique tool dealer and I bought a Stanley number no. 72. Now this is a chamfer plane, so it's designed to cut an accurate, precise chamfer on the edge of a board. So I haven't even used it yet. I'm gonna go through the process and see if I can put an edge on the blade. My criticism of the old Stanleys, you can see how thin the blades are. That's usually about 75 thousandths of an inch thick, so it's not super thick. However, it sits on a flat surface. The bedding surface is pretty accurate, so it would be well supported. It's not, it's not like a block plane, I'm not sorry, not a block plane, but a bench plane where you have the blade cantilevered out past the frog or it chatters. So this actually should be all right. So I don't have a grinder here, but that looks to be about a 30 degree bevel on there. I'm going to start off with my, actually what I need to do is put a back bevel on this. I'll treat it the same way I would any other plane. So using a steel rule and a 1000 grit diamond plate. Another problem with doing these is that they're so thin that they'll actually flex under the weight of your finger pressure. And what I want to do is put a little back bevel on there so I don't have to go through and flatten and polish the entire back of the blade. Now I have no idea what shape this is in so let's take a quick look and see if we're getting anywhere near close. So I don't know if you can see that but it's got a fair bit of work to do. I'm touching here, I'm touching there. I wonder if that's actually just my finger pressure. It wouldn't surprise me. This is gonna take a minute, so I'll get Jake to shut the camera down for a bit. We'll pick it up when we get it closer to being ready. Okay, as far as getting this ready to work right now, I'm not quite all the way to either. Actually, if you look close, maybe I am. Kind of a weird way that that's shaped, but I've got enough of that that I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it at that. That'll work. Now, I'll uh, quickly hit it on the 16,000 to get rid of the 1,000 grit scratches. Based on how quick this has progressed, I wouldn't say that this steel is terribly hard. One of the first things I'll do is try to find a replacement blade out of a little better steel. And that polished up really quick. So now I'm going to set this down on the primary bevel. Now the problem here is that that is so small, it's very difficult to, to locate. Right about there. Come up off of that just a little bit. And the edge wasn't very straight, so I may have to spend about 20 seconds on this. Try to get as many fingers along the cutting edge as possible, even out the pressure. seem to have, I, I'm straight all the way across, so what I'll do is come over here to the 16, I raise it up just a little bit higher than I did on the previous stone so I can actually put what we call a third or tertiary bevel on there. And then the final step is just to go in and remove any burr that you created. All right, sometimes on that softer steel, it's gonna leave a little bit of a burr still even after doing the ruler trick. So I just use the base of my palm to rub it back and forth. Or if you don't wanna do that, you can do it on a piece of wood. I don't feel anything there and it feels like a pretty good edge. What I really like about this plane is look at that adjustment knob. It's so easy to get lots of torque on that. I wish the adjustment knobs on planes today were like that. I'm gonna set the toe piece in line with the rest of it mostly so I can look down there and sight the blade in. Now I've never used this before, so you're seeing it for the first time. Put the lever cap on. That blade doesn't fit terribly precisely in there, so there's lots of lateral adjustment. Now that's good because if you get the blade a little out of square from sharp, frequent sharpenings, you're not gonna have to constantly be squaring it up perfectly. You got a little bit of movement. I'll put that fairly close. Put the lever cap on sight down that sole. I've got it sticking up on the right side, so I'll move it over a little. 
if I had my little brass hammer here, I would just sit there and with this relatively tight, you can just tap it and it'll just move a little bit. You can actually be pretty precise that way. I don't want to use a steel hammer because it ends up mushrooming the end of the blade. Okay, I want to just make that a little more aggressive. So I'm going to bring the blade out. That's good. Now, I'll adjust this for the amount of chamfer I want. Actually, it's got to come up this way. I'm going to just look down the sole. Make that so it's about a quarter of an inch. The chamfer will be about a quarter of an inch wide across the top. Now, this is something you can easily do with a block plane, but you got to get good at holding it exactly at 45. Sooner or later, it'll stop cutting when this side references references against that part of the board, and that side references against that part of the board. So in the meantime, you kind of have to hold it close to being 45. I'm just going to look and see. It's getting really close. in so I can get a little better performance. The farther out the blade is, the greater chance it's going to tear wherever the grain changes direction. Uh, if I can do that with a piece of wood. this way just because I find it difficult when you're planing in this direction because those edges are blunt if you're not perfectly lined up it's going to bang on the sides but kind of nice if you wouldn't be able to do it but if there was some kind of a little bit of a funnel shaped affair to guide that in so I think the only way to do it is to turn around and plane off the end if you have a sharp blade and take a light enough cut you can even go against the grain without worrying about tearing Still picking up a little bit. There. So that's what you end up with. Now I do the same to the other side. Now we get the exact same chamfer, 45 degrees. It's actually pretty neat. I'm glad I got it. Kind of wish some of the uh, current manufacturers would make one available to everybody. And call me greedy, but he had two of them, so I bought the other one as well. All right, we'll be back in the shop. See you sometime next week.